I wish I caught that on film. I was I was sitting at the table right here, and all of a sudden, boom! I heard a coconut fell right out of this tree. But here it is, right there. Don't want to get hit by one of those. I actually bought a construction helmet. I think I'm going to wear. <laughs> all right. Welcome back to the site. This is our spring house. As I, I think I talked about it in the last video, this is going to be a circular spring house. And we're going to construct it out of hollow block rebar. But on the outside, we're going to use river stones to, uh, to decorate the outside so it looks like a, a full stone house. But it'll be rebar poured concrete and hollow block on the inside and uh, i'm also going to use the river stones to make the floor and the, the floor will be riprap with concrete like a stone patio floor so that's our outlet for the water and then i'm going to have a double sink the first basin will overflow into a second basin and then uh, right here will be a shower just a simple shower because this is going to double as a mud room as well and then we're going to put our old-fashioned door on this side i don't know if it's going to be steel or wood but if we use wood we'll have to get some hardwood to treat it real good but it, i think it would look good with a wood planking door like a upside down u-shaped it's a little more more than eight feet diameter and then the ceiling is another experiment i want to try with uh, rebar enforced uh, reinforcement and uh, chicken wire or screening and then build up build that up with concrete and uh, and the roof will be the same it'll be a stone roof and uh, we're going to see see if that's going to work if it's going to be safe if we're able to reinforcement reinforce it enough and uh, then the exit we're going to have the water exit here and i i want it buried i don't want any visible pipe or visible electricity wires we're going to bury it and it's going to go up here to the top of the bluff and the the architect is going to put a 1000 liter temporary water tank up here for construction and eventually uh, we're going to have in the in the plan and in the contract it specifies a 2000 liter tank for us to feed the house and that'll be another project i want to try to disguise the tank inside of a, a windmill uh, to you know who wants to look at a stainless steel tank in your side yard so we might do something like that and uh, I think it's gonna be pretty cool we'll have power and water and we might as well make use of it right here and use it as a mud room and a place to cool off if you want to take a quick shower in freezing cold water see how it goes here in front of me is the temporary pedestal for the 1000 liter temporary water tank so I think this is the general area where the where the final one will go it'll be 2000 liters we could probably reuse this uh, but if this coconut tree survives uh, I'll probably move it and like I said I got an, an idea to disguise the water tank as a kind of a mock uh, windmill so we'll see how that works so things have been moving along and behind me you can see the columns going up and they're they're busy getting ready for the metalite people. Uh, the last I heard is that metalite is coming either next week or the week after. Uh, 
probably the week after because uh, they, they don't want to show up until the until the slabs are poured. But once the slabs are poured and uh, it's all metalite, they're going to come. I think they're bringing more than a few engineers with them to make sure everything goes right. And uh, once they're here, I think that things are going to go very rapid. Because it, it's almost like you have instant walls and floors. It's just a matter of uh, installing the electrical and water conduits and pouring the voids full of concrete. So we should have walls and floors and a roof pretty fast. But I don't want to be overly optimistic. My electrician was supposed to be here yesterday. I don't know if he's going to be here today. Uh, behind me we have a good supply of electrical conduit in the orange and water, which is PPR. It's the German engineered water pipe that's uh, it's rated uh, for like 50 years underground is what they say but everybody uses that here mostly once you go with your water pipe under your slab you know, it has to be something that's going to last this is the master bedroom CR and they're starting to chip out some plumbing access for the toilets and sinks. I'm down here at the back, the backyard. And one of the other big parts of this puzzle that we have to put together is uh, rainwater collection. That That's one of my ecological uh, feathers that I want to put in my cap. So we're, we're going to have all the rainwater from all there will be three separate roofs and all that rainwater is going to come down and be directed somewhere here and we're going to build an underground cistern and if you watch my pi dream uh that's what he that's what he did uh, he did a good job on on his i don't know how many gallons he's collecting but i want to make a big one to see us through the the dry season and just to be uh, easy on my uh, deep well I, I only want to use the deep well for uh, frankly as, as, as least I can and use rainwater uh, to uh, to save and to water all of my fruit trees with so I'm thinking I mean, this slopes pretty good around here but then we have kind of a valley down here and then it slopes back up and to another bluff and the drop off on the other bluff is pretty steep I don't even know if we can build back there even clearing it out would be it would be hard uh, but that's it's not very large it's just kind of a bluff and it drops off into the creek back there where the property line is. So I would say this area here would be the valley of, of our backyard. So I'm not sure if it makes sense to put an underground container holding tank up here. Maybe put it down here and just let gravity do its thing. Uh, that said, the septic tank is going to be up here. I don't want to run septic pipes this, this far down. Septic tank will be up here. And uh, we do plan to separate black water from gray water for a couple reasons. First, not to overload the septic system. And secondly, to, that gray water is going to come right back into use for a um, irrigation as well so the, you know the more I think about it the co more complicated it gets do you mix your gray water with your rainwater that doesn't seem to make sense so do I need a gray gray water holding 
holding tank as well. Yeah. I don't know. I need some people that know more about this than me. If you have any ideas, please leave them down in the comments. The more I look at the plan in real life versus paper, I realize we built a, a house around the swimming pool, which it was my intention, but it was probably also a subliminal idea because I love the water and I love swimming pool. It's, it's going to be a, a great place to to hang out and no matter where is where anybody in the house is they'll be able to just turn left or right and you'll see the pool and see uh, places to gather and relax so let me know in the comments what you think so far I'd really like to hear from more people I appreciate that thank you Way back in one of the earliest episodes, I mentioned that we were going to use a lot of the trees that we had to cut down to make charcoal. And uh, so one of the one of the workers who stays here 24/7 asked if he could take the wood that we have and and make charcoal, and we'd split the split the proceeds or split the charcoal as it were. So he's going to be doing this uh, this is one tree and this is um, mahogany this is the mahogany tree that f that fell down during the cyclone so making charcoal is what one of our guys is going to do on on sundays all right we just had a little downpour so i'm going to send the drone up and i'll leave you with that thanks for watching